Hello and welcome to Retrobotics Tonight. As you can tell from my newscasting station, we got Millipede into the house. Retrobotics. An early morning again to pick up a new game. Yeah, today is pickup day, and today's pickup is Millipede, a empty Millipede cocktail machine. A while back, um, I don't know if we've actually put any footage of this out, but we picked up a Smash TV cabinet in Hampton, Virginia. The Smash TV was converted to a, a Golden Tea machine, and we've been in the process of deconverting it. At the time of recording this, uh, I've stripped the black paint off the cabinet, and we've acquired a Smash TV PCB in working order, but we're still trying to find a control panel if anybody's got one. Now, the same person, the same place that we got the Smash TV cabinet when we were there, had a number of games which are rather water damaged, but one of them was a uh, Millipede cocktail, which seems to have been protected mostly by its top glass from water yeah. coming down. It looked really gross when we saw it last time, and then we kind of thought about it, we're like, maybe it is more like surface level grossness, and the guy actually ended up cleaning off the top glass. Sending us some photos. Yeah, sending us some photos, and then we're like, okay, it looks like recoverable condition. Like, there is slight water damage, there's some cabinet damage, but I don't think at the end of the day... It's I fixable. It's fixable, and the top glass looks nice, and I think most people aren't going to... So it's missing a monitor, and it's missing the Millipede PCB also, but it just happens that we have a spare 13-inch monitor and a spare Millipede PCB. So it should be something that can just go together. The rest of it is in there, the wiring harness, the uh, AR2, the power brick. So hopefully it, it comes together, and then we can finally put our Centipede PCB back in our Centipede cabinet because even though we put the multi-peed kit on the uh, millipede board and we put it in the centipede cabinet, let's be real here, nobody's played centipede since we put that in there. It just... <laughs> I think it's like once. Like, you just play millipede yeah. on the millipede PCB. So we're hoping that when we split them back out to their separate games, maybe people will actually play centipede. I'm also curious to see if uh, we notice any difference in gameplay with the bigger trackball of Millipede. Yeah. Um, just because that was the difference I noticed when we got to play some Millipedes at other arcades. Um, but I'm really excited because I love both games and um, I love cocktails. So I think it'll be nice to have both games in their own place and we'll have another cocktail to replace our um, Asteroids Deluxe that we got rid of. So. Yeah, and the art style on the Millipede cocktail matches yes. uh, Crystal Castles. They it's both okay. have a uh, colored accent bar. The only other uh, Atari cocktail with that design is Dig Dug. <laughs> so we'll have two of the three of the fancier Atari cocktails, which will be cool. Huzzah! <laughs> now, quick recap. This will Millipede was known to us as very water damaged, but now we actually will be getting a look at just how bad it is. The art on top of the game seems quite all right as it was protected by the glass, but the damage is mostly internal. So let's take a quick tour, first of the inside and then of the outside. So if we open it up, we hear distressing noises, which is to be expected, and we are greeted by free spiders and musty, dusty smell. On the top, we do have the bezel intact, along with some spider webs and the original instruction card for option settings. It looks like we have the AR2 installed in the game, though I imagine it needs uh, quite a bit of work. Coin mechs are present. The uh, audio switch is a little bit grimy, but otherwise fine. We have the RFI, or EMI cage, and the harness is present along with the power brick on the bottom. We've made no attempt so far to actually turn this thing on because, uh, quite frankly, I'm afraid it'll explode. And we did make an interesting discovery. Inside the cabinet, squashed behind the EMI cage, is the original manual. And unlike everything else in this cabinet, the manual is in tip-top shape. It comes with the operation manual, the schematic supplement manual, and the original GO7 manual. So, quite happy to have these as we, though having a military PCB, had none of the associated manuals. So we'll definitely keep this with the game. Now on to what is actually wrong. 
As you can tell from looking at the cabinet right now, there is some swelling, particularly on the left side. You can see how much it's swollen out here, and there's damage on the coin door itself area. This is probably the worst damage on the cabinet, just this whole left side of the game is uh, needing quite a bit of help or potentially replacement. The swelling goes all the way up inside the cabinet on the left side, and that's what makes that horrible noise as we tried to open the uh, top glass of the game. And on the front of the cabinet here, you can see some water damage from the inside. Now you might be wondering, what about the controls? I thought this was a semi-complete game. The controls are here, and they are also musty, dusty, and grimy. Here is the trackball for one of the control panels. Note, no art, but the harness is intact. Now, listen to the beautiful symphony of this horrible waterlogged trackball. <laughs> Needless to say, it will be getting a rebuild before we install PCB into the game. So, we want to know your opinions. Do you think this cabinet is savable? I think so. I'm going to try. But do you think I'm wasting my time? See you next time.